back to Lee Strobel. The well-known author, Pastor Lee Strobel, shared something that I think is worth listening to. He said, and I'll read it to you, these are his words, we were having a baptismal service. We told people before they came up on the platform to be baptised to take a piece of paper, write down a few of their sins that they had committed, and then fold the paper. And when they stepped up on the platform, there was a large wooden cross just on the stage. We told them to take a piece of paper, that piece of paper, and a pin, and pin that paper to the cross along with the record of their sins. You may have experienced something like that yourself in days gone by, the good old days. The Bible says that our sins were nailed to the cross with Jesus and fully paid for by his death, Lee Strobel continued. Now when you've done that, turn around and go to the pastor to be baptised. Now he said, I want to read a letter that was written by one of the women who was a part of one of those services where she was baptised. She said in her note, I remember my fear. In fact, it was the most fearful moment that I can ever remember in my life. I wrote on that paper one word in the tiniest of writing, in the smallest writing that I could actually write, the word abortion. I was so scared that someone would come up and open the paper and read it and find out that it was me. I wanted to get up and walk out of that auditorium during the service, probably run out. But the guilt and the fear, they were very strong. She said, when my turn came, I walked toward the cross and I pinned the paper there. Then I was directed toward the pastor to be baptised. He looked me straight in the eyes and I thought for sure that he was going to read this terrible secret that I'd kept from everyone for so long. However, instead I felt a peace. Like God was telling me, I love you. It's all right. You have been forgiven. I felt so much love for me. A terrible sinner. It was the very first time that I really ever felt complete forgiveness and unconditional love. It was unbelievable, just undescribable. So this morning, let me ask you a question. Do you have deep within you, deep down inside, a secret sin that you wouldn't want to write down on a piece of paper because of the fear that someone might read it. Someone might find out about you. If you were asked to write it down, would it be written so small that evening, even a magnifying glass would be of little value? Let me tell you something about the Jesus that I know. Not only does he want to adopt you as a child. He wants to lift the weight of guilt and shame off of your shoulders. When we come to Christ and accept him as our Lord and Saviour, he promises us not only the forgiveness of sins, but a freedom from future condemnation. Listen to that amazing verse again. Jeff read it before. This is from Romans 8, chapter, one, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's 8.1. I think one of my favourite verses. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Now, that's quite a promise. And I'm sure you agree, it's beautiful and so reassuring. And I speak from that quite often because it means so much. When we belong to Christ, to Jesus, we are not condemned. There's no reason to fear judgment or the judgment. We've already been declared innocent through the sacrifice of Jesus. There are, however, certain things that we hold on to, aren't there? And we struggle to let go of, and it hinders us in life. 
Today I'm speaking about finding freedom from guilt and shame. I might add, it's a part of who we are. It is our identity in Christ, finding freedom from guilt and shame. Now, most of us know, those of us who are parents, that there is no such thing as a perfect parent. We make mistakes. Grandparents do it pretty right. but <laughs> And as we look at our children and the decisions that they make in life, we sometimes think, I haven't done a very good job, have I? Was I too easy on them? Or was I too hard on them? Let me assure you this morning, you've done what you were able to do. You see, as parents, and even as grandparents, we have the privilege of building and laying the foundation for their lives. They are the ones who have to build their lives on the foundation that we've laid. And sometimes they build crooked bricks or wobbly bricks. They're not very straight. And sometimes they tip over. But the foundation is still there for them to begin again. That's worth thinking about. It's easy that, for us to look and say, well, they've made some bad choices there. And we might feel some guilt for that. We don't have to. It's not a blame yourself situation, not a blame yourself attitude for your child's actions. Our children are responsible for who they are and for the decisions that they make, indeed, all of their choices. And as parents, all we can do is lay the foundations. We need to let go of the past. We're living today. A pastor once told the story of a man who'd suffered from a number of health issues. Headaches, skin trouble, gastric disturbances, insomnia, he had it all. And it didn't take long for that pastor, as he dug around, to discover what was going on. His brother, who was the executor of the parent's will, had misappropriated the funds, and the younger brother was not happy. Anger had taken control. It had taken over his life to the point where it affected him physically. And anger does. Bad choices do. It's got to come out somewhere. The pastor suggested it was time to forgive. And after some prayer, after some a lot of thinking, I think, this young man was able to forgive his brother and say, I no longer hold a grudge. That anchor is not going to hold me down any longer. However, he kept going back to see the pastor because the symptoms were still there. And the pastor had a little nudge from the spirit and said to him, you've forgiven your brother, I can see that, but do you still remember what he did? And the man's anger rose within him. How can I not forget? How can I ever forget that? He's taken away my inheritance and every time I look at my bank book and realise what I've missed out on, I become cross. And he shouted and raised his voice. How can I ever forget what my brother has done to me? And the pastor said, not only do you need to forgive, you also need to forget. How can I forget? Now, if you're in that situation this morning, if you're caught in that trap of unforgiveness and have the inability to forget, may I suggest that you just simply take it to the Lord in prayer. He will give you that grace. He will give you that ability. There are times, I think, when you can't do that on your own. I think perhaps one thing I should say here is the hardest part of any journey, I learned this a long time ago, the hardest part of any journey is the first step. 
A friend of mine used to say, the hardest part of any job is beginning it. And it's true. We think it through, where all the problems arise in our mind, but when we put ourselves into the task, it becomes easier and it's not as bad as we think. And, you know, forgiveness, we can do it. And we need to do it for our own sanity and our own well-being. It might take time, but if we commit ourselves to the call of God on our lives, we might be able to say, as my daughter often says, watch this space. So today we're going to consider some of the struggles within us. We need to know our identity in Christ. If you were here a few weeks ago or, or so, I spoke about our DNA is the DNA of God. It's who we are. We are his children. To be in Jesus, to be in Christ, is to have our identity anchored in him. It's a part of, he's a part of our, our family. And when we repent of our sins, that is when we recognise that we've done wrong and ask forgiveness, Lord, forgive me. He is faithful and just and able to forgive us our sins. And it's then that we're identified with the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So then when God looks at you or me, he doesn't see just you or me. He sees us as being identified with Jesus. That's good news. Consider this. Jesus, the Son of God, was perfect in every way. He completely fulfilled the law and is loved by his Father beyond all measure. And then Jesus took upon himself our sinful nature, our sins, our thoughts, all that we have that are not right. Jesus knew no sin, but he took our sin upon himself. So that when he was nailed to the cross, in essence, he became probably the greatest sinner of all because he took our sins upon himself. I recall a fellow saying many years ago to me, just in conversation, God's got plenty of forgiveness, but the trouble is I don't have enough acceptance. You might be in that position. You know that God is able to forgive you, but you feel unworthy, not good enough. Well, no, we're not good enough, but it's God who makes it good enough. God has got plenty of forgiveness, more than enough, but have we got enough acceptance? There's a beautiful song, and we're going to play it shortly. It's called His Mercy Is More. Remember, we are the ones who messed up. We're the ones who make mistakes. We're the ones who are just not up to the mark because of our humanity. But God doesn't look at us with a glaring, condemning look or a judgmental stare, but with the same loving, compassionate relationship that he has for Jesus, his son. Do you know your identity in Christ? Do you know, do you know that you are a born again believer? Hold on to that acceptance in Christ. Part of the struggle we have with guilt and shame is fear. Like that lady who came to be baptised. We're frightened. Not only of what other people might say, if they knew about what we'd been like behind closed doors. God already knows. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows all about us. So our shame and our fear needs to be thrown away, do it with. We often think, what if my close friends and family find out what I'm really like? Who I really am? What would happen if someone made a DVD are they still around DVDs? But it made a movie 
of my life in the last year and played it for all the church to see all those thoughts that I've had good and bad all the things that I've said all that I shouldn't have done how would it go how would I go if it was played to the church you don't have to you see it's been erased erased through Jesus in Jesus we are accepted eternally and there is nothing that will tear you out of his hands and that includes the fear that fans the flames of guilt and shame because it has been quenched we simply need to remember that we are accepted by God in Jesus Christ and there is nothing 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 that can change that in today's passage Paul highlights in that last part of chapter 7 the things that he has done and you know I so relate to what Paul's talking about when he says the things that I want to do they are the things that I don't do and the things that I don't want to do they are the things that I do you know I think you're probably like me you have good intentions but they don't always come to be but Romans 8 1 puts it into perspective therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus write it down as one of your favorite verses when we try to please God by doing our very best we know that we're not going to hit the mark we will fall short it's only going to make our feelings worse about ourselves because we won't do it but remember this that we have the Holy Spirit do you know what the Holy Spirit has done for us he has equipped us to pull away from sin he has equipped us to pull us out of this bog of the mire that we in, are in Elaine and I saw an advert on television about a ute pulling other, a whole lot of stuff out of a bog. You may have seen it. It's a bit like that. But the Hilux is not going to get you out of trouble, but Jesus will. He will pull you out. And others who hold on to him, he will save you. The good news is that God loves us that much, that he supplies our every need, all that we need. No more, no less. He supplies us with Jesus, his only Son, our Lord and Saviour. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you have saved us and set us free. And the weight of guilt and shame no longer has any hold upon us because of Jesus and so this morning Lord we just ask that you would touch our lives to reassure us to remind us that you indeed are our Lord and Saviour and nothing can ever change that so Lord as we step out of these walls today into our mission field we go knowing indeed that we're not on our own that you are with us and that we will be empowered to be your people in the place where you've called us to be Thank you, Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen.